Hello and welcome to part two of winter sewing at the Busy Bug Homestead. So I did part one with some carnations, some calendula, and some stock. I think those are all the ones I had in part one. Um, now I'm going to do part two or the second video in this series. I'm going to be working with some flocks. I have the Lavender Beauty. This came from Baker's Creek. I also have Cherry Caramel, which came from Baker's Creek. I am going to do some of these in winter sewing containers that I have here. They're just the plastic bottles. I cut in half, stuck some soil down in here. The idea is they become a greenhouse, they get taped up, and all that heat gets trapped inside. And when it's time for them to just naturally grow, they'll just naturally grow. You open them up, let them vent until you're ready to put them in the garden, and then plant them out when spring comes. Very simple process. Fantastic process because it saves me space inside, which I'm already limited on. So I've got my flocks, and I've also got mountain garland clark. Yeah, the mountain garland, you know I can't pronounce anything. Mountain garland clarkia, and this is just really pretty. I don't know, it says to plant them in early spring, so I'm assuming they can go in the cold. I'm gonna try, because I'm also going to sow some inside as well, and put some in the garden. We're experimenting this year. It's gonna be a whole bunch of experimenting happening all the way around, so if you're wondering, maybe you wanna try some of them next year, what worked best for me? Keep on watching, like, subscribe, ring the bell. I will be posting all the videos as I go along with my experiments here. So I got this one from Renee's Gardens. I've had great success with her seed, so I'm excited to try this one in all the applications in which I will be trying it. All right, so let's get started. All right, so we're going to start with our Clarkia. So these wanna go in an eighth of an inch. There's their packets. They're super pretty. And I am going to do exactly like I did the first time and like I've been doing inside. I'm just gonna take the back of a pen or a pencil. In this case, I have a Sharpie because I forgot my pencil again gonna kind of make a little divot. I do five per container on all my containers. It just seems to work for me. I will be able to thin them out and put them under row covers if that becomes necessary, but we go pretty quickly into warm here, so I'm not really worried about not being able to get them out in the garden. And these seeds are teeny tiny. So, and there's a lot in this packet. I'm going to seed generously. I think I will do two containers of those because I've never grown these before. I'm curious. I feel like they're going to do well in the winter sewing containers because they can handle a light frost. Just like last time, pretty quick process. Plant your seeds, water them in, pop your stakes in, tape them up, and right on the outside. So that is two of our containers down. Moving on to our flocks. Now, I have never grown flocks like this before. I have perennial flocks out in my garden, um, which should put on a beautiful show this year because they are a ground cover flocks and I have them planted right up by my obelisk. It's gonna be really pretty. Where I had all of my climbing vines last year. Let's see, where did I go? All right, so these want an eighth of an inch, just like the other ones. This is our cherry caramel. Two of the cherry caramel. I have more containers. This is not all of my containers. I just haven't cut all of my containers yet. Once I run through all of these, I will be moving into a much smaller orange juice container because that's just what I have. I now have two containers of my cherry caramel flocks. I'm going to water them in, get them tagged, and move on to the lavender beauty. All right, so same thing with these. Pop little holes down. Super simple process. I recommend everybody at least once try winter sewing. You just have one container and one seed packet and maybe a little bit of light on your balcony if you're in an apartment or on a small back porch. It's a great way to do it if you don't want to put lights in your house and it's stuff that can be sewn outside. 
My issue is I have the space, but lights get expensive. So if I can utilize the sunshine, I am going to do that. I need to go refill my container. It's a good thing this is our last one because my water is running out. Okay, so that is gonna do it for this winter sewing video. I got three more varieties done. I am happy to add them to my pile that I'm making. Not really a pile, I'm kind of making my own little like plastic container garden, if you will. This year I didn't use pretty colored tape though. Last year I did because there was a lot of snow on the ground when I was doing it. I needed something colorful in the garden. This year, they're just gray, it's fine. Um, but if you are interested in seeing whether or not they succeed, interested in seeing me do some more, I have several more I'm gonna be doing. I'll be picking up some more tomorrow. I'm doing a couple more containers every day kind of until I get all my winter sewing done. Um, please like and subscribe and ring the bell to get notifications when I post a new video. I have a lot of seeds starting going on. I have a lot of stuff that I have planned for spring. Uh, and also we are going to be attempting flower sales this year. We're gonna see how well we do with that. I'm pretty excited for that. Uh, and I always, I'm always holding on hope to having chickens at some point. Who knows? So if you're interested in seeing the progress of Busy Bug Homestead, please subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you back. And uh, thank you so much for joining me today. We will see you next time. Bye.